Hi, this is Joe Hildreth, and welcome to Episode 9 of Exploring Joomla3.x. So in Episode 7, we started out by writing the uh, smallest or the minimalist uh, module that was possible uh, and be able to get it uh, to install it in, in Joomla, and it worked. Uh, and then in Episode 8, we talked a little bit about... Um, uh, a little bit about security uh, per, to prevent directory listings and we and uh, uh, to prevent uh, someone executing our code outside of Joomla. Uh, I'm sorry, Joomla. And uh, we talked about the metadata that's held in the XML file. And that exercise really um, was just to kind of get you uh, used to the file layout that Joomla uses and uh, the, the file structures, the manifest file, and that sort of thing. So at this point, I think we've reached an, uh, enough of that sort of stuff, and we're going to move uh, forward, and we're going to create uh, a whole new module, and uh, it's going to be a random quote module, um, and over the course uh, of the tutorials, uh, we'll cover database access, views, layouts, helper files, um, module parameters, and just some other tidbits and things along the way in developing a module. Um, but before that, we need to um, we need to get things started here so you remember that minimalist module I'm in my Joomla projects folder and here you see my mod smallest my minimalist module here we're gonna use this as a tool to uh, save some time and create another module so I'm going to uh, create a new folder here and I'm gonna call this mod underscore random quote because that's gonna be the name of the module and then I'm gonna copy these three files, this index, mod smallest, and mod smallest XML, uh, over to my mod random quote folder. So these, this is going to be the basis of my mod random quote. Now remember that uh, we have to rename these files. So this will be mod random quote dot PHP. This is the entry file. Remember they have to have the same name. We have to do the same thing for the manifest file, so this would be mod random quote XML. And then on the inside of the XML or the manifest file, we have to change some data. So we're going to open that up here, and uh, the name of this module is changed. It's not smallest module anymore, it's uh, random quote, I'm going to call it and the metadata, the author all the way down to version, you can put whatever you want in there. I'm just going to leave that the same. Now the module description has changed a little bit, so now this is, uh, displays a random quote. Okay, now that takes care of the metadata. Uh, remember that the name and the description shows in the back end, uh, as well as some of this other stuff. Now the file section, this obviously has changed. We're not dealing with mod smallest anymore. We're dealing with mod random quote. That is the uh, name of the module. And the file that it will load is mod random quote. And finally, the manifest file's name is mod random quote. So hopefully, you can see how. Uh, this has saved us a little bit of time in creating this. We didn't have to retype all this. We just copied it and changed some data. So let's save that and close this file. So now we have the uh, bare bones minimum of a random quote module in place. So now let's build on it. So um, one of the first things that uh, I want to talk about is Joomla has the ability to cater to many different languages uh, through the use of language files and there's no reason that uh, our module should be any different. Uh, even if you don't speak another uh, language, by breaking out certain parts of the module uh, to use language strings, uh, you, you allow someone else or you give someone else the ability to translate your module into another language. And you know what? It's really simple to do. Okay. So, But before we start uh, talking about how to add language strings to our module, let's talk a little bit about um, the actual language files and you know where they're stored on the file system and that sort of stuff. So if we go to the desktop and uh, the joomdev folder where we have our uh, copy of Joomla installed and look you'll see that there's a folder called language. Okay now we're in the site application uh, so if we open up language we'll see uh, 
folder, a folder, or multiple folders, depending on how many languages you have installed in your copy of Joomla, and they will all start with uh, two lowercase letters, a dash, and two uppercase letters. Okay, and uh, what this um, uh, means is that uh, the first two letters are the international two-letter code for a language. The last two letters are um, a two-letter code for the dialect if there's multiple dialects for uh, a language. And to elaborate on that, uh, EN uh, is the international code for English and GB means that this is a Great Britain dialect. Um, if there was an EN-US that would mean it's uh, the English language with the US dialect because there are some differences uh, particularly in spelling and uh, that sort of thing between US English and Great Britain English. Um, as far as which is right and which is wrong, I have no clue. So uh, you'll also see another folder called Overrides. Now the Overrides folder allows you to uh, quite literally override a language string, but uh, we won't really get into that. So you'll see that uh, I only have one folder, ENGB. When I installed Joomla, it was installed with the English Great Britain um, language pack. And if we open up this folder, what we'll see is a number of files that all start with ENGB that that defines the language, and then we see com contact or uh, lib simple pi or, or whatever. There's but and and then it ends in a dot ini. And you'll see some that end in a dot sys dot ini. So the naming format here is the language code English dash Great Britain, right? En dash gb dot the name of the extension, right? So in our case, it would be en dash gb dot mod underscore random underscore quote dot ini, and the same thing with a dot sys ini. So let's talk about these two files, this .ini file that you see in the .sysini files. Well, the .ini files are typically used uh, to translate um, um, strings uh, to different languages uh, within your extension, your, your component, your module, your plugin, or whatever, that the end user is going to see. The .sysini file um, does the same thing, but it, that's used in a different area, and the the .sys ini files are typically used um, when the uh, extension uh, is installed. It's used in the backend and different parts for the administrator. So you can think of that as that uh, these are system language strings, okay? And to be more specific, the .sys ini the .sys .ini files will um, uh, will hold translations for the following. During the extension's installation. Um, it allows uh, localization of the post installation messages. Okay, and that's uh, probably you'll see that in more complex components or extensions. Um, in components, um, the language strings that build the component menu in the back end is this is where they're picked up and translated from. Um, components can have parameters and you can localize any strings in the, uh, in the parameters and menu parameters. Uh, uh, for your extension and they're held in that. And finally um, the extension manager that you've seen in the back where we've looked at the module where you see um, the name and the description there uh, stored in this file as well. Okay and everything else is held in just the .ini file and we'll clarify as we go along. Uh, you'll also see if we go back to the root directory in the administrator application you'll see that there's a language file or I'm sorry a language folder here as well and that it follows the same naming conventions with the um, four digit uh, or four letter code separated by dashes and inside you'll see the same INI and the dot sys INI files so um, now the other option that we have for language files are actually from within the component and there's some discussion about should language files for the site be held in the global language uh, folder or should they be held uh, inside of your uh, component or your module or plugin or whatever um, 
the general consensus is that language files should reside with your extension. And what this means is that if we are in uh, the modules, you know, we've written a module and we have a module random quote, um, we would be able to um, have the language folder inside the um, inside the uh, extension, following the same naming format. You know, the the four are the two letters dash two letter uh, folder name, and then the ini and sys ini. Uh, folders respectively. So um, Joomla can read either one so we could put it in either one but in this um, in this uh, uh, set of tutorials we're gonna we're gonna put our language files and with our extension. Now I would encourage you uh, to read uh, up you can go to Joomla's uh, uh, site uh, for documentation and it's uh, docs.joomla.org and what we want is the specification oops um, of language files that's a mouthful of a URL and if I even typed it right um, we'll see. You can come here and you can read about what you can put in a language file and um, the naming conventions and that sort of stuff. So that'd be good, some good reading uh, on the side. So with that out of the way, let's um, let's uh, update our component so that our I'm sorry, our module so that our module can use language files. Okay, to support language files, we're going to need to create some files. So let's go into our random quote uh, folder here where we have our project. And we're going to create um, a new folder, and it's going to be called language. Okay, now remember in every folder we want a copy of this index.html file. So I'm going to copy this, go into my language folder, and paste that. Now we need a folder for each of our uh, languages that we're going to support. So I'm going to do en-gb, okay, and then again I'm going to copy this index file. And remember, this is just to keep um, keep the uh, web server from listing the contents. And inside here we need two files, okay. So we're going to create an empty file, and this is going to be en-gb because this is the language format that we're supporting dot the name of our mod or name of our module so mod underscore random quote and then we need a dot ini file okay and then I'm just going to copy this file and rename it to get rid of this dot sys dot ini Okay, so all the files are in place to support um, um, language strings. All right, so you know in the past we've talked about the um, the XML or the manifest file, and I mentioned if we open that file, I mentioned that um, the name tag and the description tag are translatable. Okay. So to translate a string, um, what happens, Joomla looks at this uh, the string here inside of this tag and says, okay, is there a language file for this, uh, uh, for this extension? And if there is, does, does this text here, is it found in one of those language files so that I can display some text? Okay, and uh, if it doesn't find it, it just displays the text that's between the tag. So in our case, if there was a, a, a language string called random quote that was defined as some string, it would replace it with the string that's in the file here. And if it doesn't exist, it will just put up random quote. Now language strings in Joomla, um, they cannot have any spaces in them. Okay, they uh, and they should be all uppercase. And there's some other other restrictions to the strings. 
but uh, you can read about that on the page that I told you about. So we're going to call our our uh, name string here. We're just going to call it mod underscore random underscore quote. Okay, and that's not by accident. By using the name of the module for the name here um, uh, of our string, we're localizing um, the string or um, uh, setting the string so that there's no collisions with any other uh, language file out there. So it's going to look for mod random quote. Okay, and we don't have to worry about changing the string on some other thing. So all of our strings are going to start with that mod underscore random underscore quote, and then we'll add something. We'll pin something to the string to to kind of tell about what area that is. So our name is mod random quote, and we're going to change our description here to mod underscore random quote underscore. Now this is the description. So D E S C. Uh, we'll spell it out. Okay, so now what happens here is that uh, when Joomla sees this, it will look for that string, uh, that key, mod random quote, and mod random quote description in the language files and replace it with whatever text that we put there. Okay, so let's, uh, let's save that. And um, from here, let's go and add our string so let's close this here so remember since uh, the name and the description of the module is used in the back end we're gonna have to put our language strings in the dot um, sys dot ini file so if we go into our language engb folder and let's open our dot sys dot ini file here and let's add some language strings okay so um, we can put a comment in these files by using a semicolon okay and let's just make a note here to ourselves these are uh, translation strings uh, for the um, Joomla system to use oops okay and let's put in our string so we have mod random quote okay and that's going to equal well we said this is random quote okay and we said we're going to use mod random quote description and we said the description of it was well this displays a random quote okay and that's really all we have to add uh, for that to to uh, to uh, translate our strings into English now just just to elaborate a little bit let's say that we also wanted to support German how would we do that well we can come over here and we can create a new folder for the German language. The international code for that is DE dash, and then there is there's no dialect, specific dialect. So we're just going to use the language code again. And then inside here, we would create a file um, called DE dash DE dot the name of our component mod random quote. dot i and i okay and then we would create another file called de dash de dot mod underscore random underscore quote dot sys dot i and i okay and then remember the strings that we're working with are the ones that are going to be translated to the back end so they go in the sys dot i and i um Oh, you know what I've done? I created a folder there. So let me delete that. <laughs> we needed an empty file. I'll tell you what, when we do this. And then... This dot sys dot i and i. Okay. So we, uh, the strings that we're going to translate are translated in the back end. So that would be this file here. We'll open that up. And... 
we have two strings that we want to uh, translate. Remember that was uh, mod underscore random quote. And mod underscore random quote description. Now, if I were a German speaker, I would uh, I would put the German translation for um, random quote in here, um, which I think is uh, uh, I use the Google Translate here, and I think this is something like uh, Zufos. Zitat. Okay. And then um, we would use the, you know the description here. But anyway, that this is just a, just an example here. So this is how you would support um, multiple strings. You would have uh, multiple language files, um, one set of files for English, one for German, one for Italian, whatever you wanted to do, and um, and then your component would support those. Okay, but I'm going to remove this here simply because I don't speak German. I wish I could. Uh, but I can't, so we're just going to remove that and stick with the English. Okay, so um, now that uh, we've added our strings, um, our translation strings, we have to be able, we have to tell Joomla to install them. And you remember in our manifest file, we have um, a section called files, and these are the files that are installed on the front end we want to uh, be able to install the language folder and everything under it. Now we could use file name, you know, uh, language slash index.html uh, and et cetera, et cetera. But you know, if we done file name by file name, this list would grow quite huge. Fortunately, Joomla allows us to include folders uh, with a recursive copy, which means that it will copy the folder and everything under it for us. And all we have to do is name the folder. So if we say folder, okay, the folder that we want to copy is language. Then Joomla knows that not only do we want to copy these three files up here, but we also want to copy this folder and everything under it. And that's really all we have to uh, do for that. So one other thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, uh, these are kind of predefined um, strings that we're using here are ones that uh, Joomla looks for uh, automatically but we can use strings anywhere in our module we want and we can call those strings uh, translations into effect by using a, uh, a method called jtext and we'll get into that um, as as we move along throughout the uh, throughout the tutorials but you know what at this point let's uh, let's check our work so we want to zip all this up the language the index the PHP and the XML files into a zip archive and install it into uh, Joomla and see where we're going here so let's uh, open up our web browser and let's go to joom.dev administrator and log in I think I set mine to admin and admin and we're going to install the extension that we just created. So let's go to manage and install. Okay, we're going to browse and we want the random quote zip file. Upload and install. Okay, so told me it was successful. If you had an error here, you know, to look in your XML file, uh, maybe something wrong there. And uh, now, in order to see it on the front end, we need to go to modules and enable it. So there's our random quote module, okay, and we want to publish it. And we need to select a position. I'm using Protostar, so I'll use position seven, which is on the right hand side. And we have to assign it a menu, and I want it on all pages. So let's save that. Now let's open another tab and see if it shows up. So we'll go to Joom.dev, and there we have random quote. Now what what do we know about this? Well, we know that um, Oh, we know that it works, right? Let's uh, look in the back end here, and let's uh, go to Extension Manage, and let's look in the back end here, and let's uh, 
change our search tools. Let's go to module and let's find our module. It was called random quote. There it is. Now here's what we know. This random quote and its um, its uh, description displays a random quote. That text is pulled from our language files, so that's that's where they're getting translated. So if we were in 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 German or Italian or something like that uh, as a language, th it would grab the German or the Italian uh, strings and place here for us. So that's uh, that's pretty much how it works. I don't really know how to uh, uh, make it any simpler than that. And like I said, I uh, I didn't uh, uh, I'm not a very good teacher, so bear with me. Okay, so now our uh, little small component supports multiple languages, and we will uh, uh, keep adding to that functionality as we go along. But now let's talk about um, um, what I call a view, or what Joomla calls a view, or a layout. So Joomla supports uh, layouts, and layouts allow you to display information that you want in, in uh, different views. So let's say, for example, that you sell books, right? And every week uh, you have uh, you have a sale, and let's say you want to, on the home page you just want to say, hey, you know, we have books on sale, and this is the list of books, right? But now maybe over on a different page you want to list those books, but you also want to list maybe the sale price uh, or the percentage that you have off, or maybe you want to display uh, a little paragraph about them. So those are different views. Now we, you know, you could do that by writing multiple modules and assigning the modules a different place, but um, why go through all that work? Uh, because Joomla will allow you to display information differently based on a layout or a view. Okay, and uh, that's kind of all part of a uh, what we call uh, it's part of a sort of a, a model view controller thing uh, for for uh, modules. It's, it's oversimplified, and we'll go into model view controller in a lot of depth when we get into uh, components. But um, to uh, uh, to get started, let's add uh, some file, uh, some folders uh, to our project in order to support a view. Okay, so we're over here in our random quote uh, folder. Okay, and we need to uh, add another folder. Okay, and this folder is called TMPL, and I think in my mind that's just an abbreviated form of template. Okay, or a view. Okay, so now in this folder, obviously we want to make a copy of this index.html file. Okay, and then we need a file in here called default. So when Joomla is, doesn't have a, a specific view uh, given to it, it will always load the default view. So default.php. This is the file that it will load when it has nothing else, or it will load it explicitly if you tell it to. Okay, um, so the default PHP. Um, file let's open that and edit it and let's add the following code so we want uh, PHP here okay and defined J exec or die remember we use this line here to prevent somebody from executing any code outside of Joomla and then since this is the view, this is the this is the file that will handle the displaying of the data. So what what do we want displayed here? Well, let's keep it simple. So let's uh, let's just echo um, the random quote module. Okay, and then this way we'll know if it's working. So let's save that. That's all we need in that file for now. Uh, we'll get into this a little more um, as we develop this uh, module. Okay, so that file has been saved. Um, so now uh, let's go back to the um, let's go back to the folder that has our random quote PHP file. Okay, and let's open that and let's make some changes. Well, first of all, we're going to get rid of this "Welcome to my module" because remember, everything that's going to be printed. Uh, for the layout of the module is going to be handled in the default PHP or whatever view that we create for it later. But we have to tell uh, Joomla how to, how, to, how to do this. So we're going to require, now remember require is a PHP um, 
command that says, "Hey, I want you to load this um, this file." Okay, and Joomla has a has a class called JModule Helper that uh, it uses mostly to determine the module name and and its uh, get its executable file and that sort of stuff. But there's one uh, method uh, available in that class is very ha handy to us, and it says, "Hey, that we're going to use we we need the layout path." Um, of the view that we want to use. So the class uh, is J module helper. Okay, and the method that we want to call is get layout path. Okay. Now the this method takes uh, two parameters. Okay. The first one is what module are you looking to get the layout for? Well we want R. So mod random quote Okay, and then the second parameter is well, which view do you want? Well, we're going to hard code the default view. Okay, and uh, if we had set up our <clears throat> or when we uh, set up uh, parameters uh, for our module that can be used uh, to allow an end user to select a view, this is where we would probably grab the parameter and say, okay, we want this view, whatever view the administrator set in the back end. So you can see how we can get multiple views or, or layouts based on what's here. So, um, like I said, in our case, we're asking for the default view explicitly, okay? And uh, we'll introduce module parameters and expand on this later. Okay, so let's save that and close the file. And finally, uh, again, if we when we install, we need uh, we need to tell Joomla what files it needs to install. So let's open up our manifest file and edit that. And let's add another folder director directive, right? Because the folder that we want is folder and is tmpl. So Joomla will know that it needs to copy this folder and the contents up um, along with it. Okay, so uh, that's all we need for that. So let's save that. And let's go check our work again. So let's close this. So now we need to create a new archive. And we're going to grab the language folder, the template, the index, PHP and the manifest file. We're going to compress and create a zip archive of those again. Create. Yes, I want to replace it. Okay, so there's my new archive and let's go install it. So I'm going to go back to Joomla again here on the back end. I'm going to go to Extensions, Manage, and Install. And I'm going to browse. And there's the random quote. Now remember our method of ins installation is upgrade. So when, even though we already have it installed, Joomla is simply going to copy uh, the new files over and replace the old ones. So I'm going to select that, upload and install. Okay, it says that it was successful, so let's find out. Let's go to the front end and let's hit one of our links. Alright, so you notice that the text of the of the module change from, you know, welcome to my module to random quote module. So we know that we're pulling the the um, the default template. Okay, so now if you have any errors on the front end, right, you know, that uh, uh, this didn't come up or there's an error, you know, you need to uh, check that you, you know, that you've included the template or the TMPL folder in the, in the manifest file and, you know, and that the spelling's correct. Um, and check the spelling of your default PHP file. Um, uh, make sure that uh, you have the method call to get layout path. Um, is correct and that you know you don't have any errors there so but anyway if all went well this is where you should be and the code for this will be available on the website um, so we talked a little bit about international uh, internationalizing uh, your module by using language strings okay and the and the and we've talked about the concepts of different layouts or views when displaying the contents of the module um, and we'll see both these topics come up again as we develop uh, as we enhance this uh, module. Now uh, to be useful we really need to be able to pull some data from somewhere to you know the quotes to uh, display uh, in our 
random quote module. So the next tutorial, we'll talk about uh, a few tools that will help us uh, uh, generate the uh, SQL file that uh, Joomla will need to install the data, and we'll talk about the install and upgrade and and uninstall methods that uh, are can be used in the in the manifest file. So uh, if you have any questions, um, um, feel free to you know post on this video on the YouTube channel. Uh, my YouTube channel, uh, in case you're watching this website, is at uh, uh, youtube.com slash c slash myheap with a capital M and a capital H. So let's just go there. So this is uh, youtube.com slash c slash myheap. And then that will take you to my YouTube channel. Um, or you can go to myheap.com, my personal website, and you can click contact us and you can send me an email there and I'll do my best to answer. Um, if you go to technology exploring Joomla 3x, you'll see where I'm adding the um, sections on writing a module and if you go to one of these, you'll see that I've added a zip file and that will give you the source code for the module from where I ended the episode. So uh, other than that, um, hopefully you found this tutorial a little bit helpful. Um, maybe a little discombobulated. Some days I'm, I think I spend my day um, a little um, disjointed from myself or something. Um, but if you found it helpful, please click like uh, or t and share with your friends and maybe someone else will get something out of this. Uh, and in the meantime, just have a blessed day.